Good morning, I'm Nick Ball and welcome to TMTV. To get, today's guest is the owner of Find, Get, Grow, Claire Fanner. Claire has a wealth of experience in the legal sector, having previously been a marketing director for two regional law firms, and in 2019 created Legal CX, a series of one-day regional conferences focusing on providing law firms with the why, what, and how of delivering an exceptional customer experience. Welcome, Claire. Thank you very much, Nick. Great to be here. Good stuff. Now, for the audience, there is a chat facility at the bottom of the page. Please use this. We want you to use this. We want you to ask some relevant questions and we want you to leave hope, hopefully with the better informed solutions around the marketing side of things. So, Claire, I know all about you, um, but I'm sure our audience don't. Would you like to go into a little bit more detail as to your, your background for the audience? More than happy to. Um, so hello everybody, uh, good morning, thank you for joining us. I was scared there'd be nobody turning up for my session, but the good news is there is. Um, so brilliant, thanks for coming. Um, so my background, I've been a marketer uh, and a business developer basically all my career. I started out in financial services um, uh, at, if anyone can remember them, Friends Provident as was, that became Friends Life, that now is all part of the Aviva group. Um, and that's where I sort of cut my teeth, if you like, and learned my trade and got into marketing and business development. Um, and that was sort of, uh, I, dare I say it, 30 plus years ago, showing my age. Um, you can see the lines are in there. <laughs> um, uh, and I was stayed in financial services for a number of years before I stepped across into the um, uh, legal sector um, in 2007. And actually, it's quite, quite timely because the reason I stepped across at that time was I was working for an adverse um, uh, mortgage, adverse credit mortgage lender in 2007. Um, and we'll all remember what happened next uh, towards the end of 2007. That was the lead up into the last recession. Um, and I could see the writing was on the wall uh, in terms of um, my role there and the company I was working for. And an opportunity came up in a regional law firm um, called Trithowans, which um, I took up. Um, and thus my journey of working in the legal sector began. Um, and since then I've been marketing director at two different regional law firms and subsequently set up uh, Find Get Grow um, three and a half years ago. Uh, basically because I felt that there was a need for a lot more support for law firms, in particular law firm marketers, um, around doing better marketing um, and having more support to do it. So that's sort of a little bit about me, if you like, Nick. Thanks. Thanks, Claire. Tell me, what was the last sporting event you went to? Ah, I know why you're asking that, because you know the answer. <laughs> so uh, it, it seems a bit insensitive to be talking about lovely things that we've been doing. But uh, uh, in February, I was in South Africa and was lucky enough to go and watch a one day international cricket match uh, at Newlands. Um, so with a beautiful backdrop of Cape Town and the mountain, Table Mountain. So It just sets a nice visual for, for, for me, Claire, in the background. Thank you. <laughs> um, so please, please carry on with your, with your presentation. Uh, thank you very much. Um, before I share slides, and I have prepared some slides, I just want to take a step back and, and give my presentation some context. Um, so clearly the topic is about marketing in tough times and talking about surviving and thriving because I think both of those things are really really relevant but let's just remember what we're currently dealing with right now our well-being is threatened our health is being threatened lives are being lost um, we're scared we're stressed we're frightened we're feeling helpless we're disempowered we can't communicate uh, with our loved ones, with our family, our friends, our colleagues in the ways that we normally do. And that is bloody scary. We've all got stories to tell about how we're trying to support our communities, how we're trying to support our families. Um, but fundamentally, we are lost at the moment and we are frightened. Um, and that really gives the context as to why it's important that we do continue to do marketing. Um, at a time such as this, because it's personal, we need help, and everyone out there, our clients, are exactly the same. They're lost, they are desperate to get help. And we talk about being trusted advisors. Well, there has never been a time where it would be more important for us to step up to the mark and be that trusted advisor that we talk about. So that kind of 
if you like, gives a little bit of background as to why I'm talking about marketing in tough times, because this isn't about being insensitive. This isn't about um, uh, selling things directly to people, about putting out promotions and materials that are irrelevant. This is about being there for our clients, being there for people who need what it is that we have to sell, do, support them with. So what am I going to cover today? And please, as, as Nick said earlier, please do ask questions as we go along. Use the chat facility. Nick will pipe in and ask me questions as we go along. So if there's any particular point that you want me to cover in more detail, please do. I've got a sort of broad agenda to cover with you today, and this is um, what it looks like. Um, so I'm going to talk about why I think it's important that we do still uh, undertake marketing right now. I'm going to actually um, share a little bit of some business uh, examples as to businesses that are have benefited by continuing to market in appropriate ways through a recession um, and then talk about some practical specifics um, and then as I say uh, questions throughout but equally questions at the end if that would be helpful. Um, I just want to kind of uh, go back one step. This is not just a recession. This is a recession on steroids. It, it is totally not something that anyone could ever have prepared for. There is no rule book. There is no ready to go answer. We are all having to find our way. Um, and it's great that TM Group have organized TM TV to help bring together some of these topics and people who can talk in an expert way about them. So I'm gonna share with you what um, I consider to be the key reasons as to why you need to continue to do your marketing. So starting with, um, actually this is not about being insensitive and just trying to sell products. Um, if we did that, uh, our, our clients and our potential clients and our communities would not thank us. We've already seen some terrible examples of businesses that have perhaps overstepped and, and the two that jumped to my mind thus far are JD Weatherspoons when they uh, didn't feel that pubs should be shut uh, just a couple of weeks ago, seems an eternity ago, um, uh, and um, Sports Direct. Um, really, you think you're an essential service, you really want to risk people's lives. What we cannot do is market inappropriately. And therefore, some of the things that we might do normally or might have done historically are not necessarily what we need to be doing right now. And I'm going to share with you what I think you need to be doing. But before I do that, I want to just remind people of what marketing is, because I think a lot of people uh, perhaps misunderstand it. They do see it very much as selling and promotion. And there's the four P's for any marketers in the, uh, on the call will understand the four P's around um, how we typically do our marketing. But the fundamentals are, are in front of you and I've highlighted um, the key words. As marketers, our role is to help identify, anticipate, and then satisfy our customers' needs and wants. And I think that's really important to absorb and just think about because ne nothing in there says sell products to people directly. Nothing in there is just about promotion. All of this is more strategic. This is about saying, what do our clients need and want right now? And if we think about it, what they need and want, because we're in the same boat. Remember, we're scared, we're stressed, we're frightened. Let's make this personal. Let's think about ourselves, think about our families, think about the people around us. What we need and want right now is information. We want advice from trusted and recognised experts. We want reassurance. We want support. Um, and we want experts to step up to the plate and give us the what's, the how's, the why's. So, so much is changing every day. Um, what we need to be doing is helping them get access to understanding how it affects them and what they can do about this thing that's affecting them. So how can they protect their family if they get coronavirus? What happens if they can't work and their income's limited? What support is available to government? How can they keep cash in their business? These are all questions that our clients are asking. And these are all questions, and, and there are many more. I have only identified a couple. They're all questions that we are well positioned to help them with. And so this is the sort of marketing that we need to be thinking about doing. So 
my first kind of call to action, if you like, is, is to say what you need to be doing is actually sitting down and identifying your client's needs and wants relative to your services and what it is you do and your community and identify those topics that they need help with and provide access to that information. Um, key topics provided in a helpful, reassuring way. One thing I always ask is please ask the question on everything you create, everything you think of doing, every message you want to put out there is that is this helpful test. Um, just sense check that it's not a vanity post if it's on social media and there've been far too many of those. Make sure there's genuine value add to your end user, to your clients. Um, and then use the many channels that are available to you to get your message out there. We've got digital um, uh, channels available to us now that weren't here in the recession in 2008. Um, and that makes it much easier for our voice to be heard. Um, but also ask your clients and your potential clients, how can we help you? What do you need to know so that you can then answer their questions? Um, and it goes without saying, I think, um, about being sensitive. Um, and clearly right now we've got to show up for our clients um, over here. Don't um, again, it's obvious to put an advert uh, out on social media or, or in some other place to just say, you know, want to get a new will is perhaps not the right way to message something. It doesn't mean to say you can't talk about wills, but you just need to think carefully about how you do that. Um, quick business case, because I think this is quite interesting and this is, um, based on the recession in 2008. Um, and a lot of businesses right now, understandably, are saying, whoa, we can't afford the luxury of marketing. Um, and I want to make a case to say marketing is not a luxury, it is a necessity. I understand that business income is dropping, I understand that cash flow is tight, lockup is creating issues. I know that there are many businesses that are, are having to or have put staff on furlough, um, uh, but there is also some government support coming in um, to mitigate some of that. It won't go all the way, but it will help a little bit. But this is not about having the luxury of cash to spend on marketing. This is about making sure you continue to, to do your marketing because it is a necessity. This is what will help you get through these tough times. So. Just using a couple of examples here, Lego, Netflix, Amazon, Domino's, none of them are professional services, but actually there's some parallels and some interesting things that we can learn from what they did and how they came out of the last recession. Um, and it was a combination of different activities that each of them undertook. But for example, Lego looked at expanding into new markets. They identified areas where they didn't, hadn't previously reached out to, but where there were people who actually wanted their product. Um, Dominoes. Um, they di diversified and changed their standard product, which, you know, it's a pizza for Christ's sake. How much can you change your standard product? Well, they could because they came up with a completely new pizza recipe that transformed their business. Um, Netflix, um, uh, they were relatively young in 2008, but actually what they looked at was offering a different range of products and packages. Um, that were lower cost. So it wasn't a you only get this premium version. They looked at remodeling how they priced and packaged things. Um, and most notably in the case of Amazon, who of course we all know, um, their big focus was on making profitability a secondary priority to customer service by offering products for much lower prices and basically making them affordable and accessible to their customers. Um, at a time when customers were trying to save money but still needed to, to, to buy certain things. Um, and the net result, um, you know, surprise, surprise, they, they've all seen growth, they've all seen profits go up, they've seen sales increase. Um, uh, so there's a case, but let's just bring that forward to now. And there's a couple of examples out there um, of, of things people are doing and um, how that is being received and how that is being regarded. And I've got three three in front of you. Uber Eats, okay, let's face it, they, they're one of the lucky businesses in the, the current crisis um, in terms of their business model. But what they haven't done is stood still. They haven't just said, great, we're going to get lots of new business, we're ready, you know, we've got a model, we've got apps, we've got a marketplace. What they've actually done is taken a step back and they've totally remodeled their business. They've changed their systems, their processes. They have made it much, much easier and cheaper for new restaurants to join their network. So all of those restaurants that didn't have distribution or takeaway services that 
quickly needed to for their business to sustain. So your local pub, for example, um, their Uber Eats has made it easy for them to sign up and made it cheaper. They've dropped a lot of the up upfront costs to enable them to join the network. Um, and they've also streamlined their, their financial systems to make sure that the money gets to the end restaurant as quickly as possible where, at a time when cash flow is, in, is so important. And they've also adapted their app for the end user to make it easier for us as consumers to order things through the app um, and for things to be delivered to our doorstep, not necessarily to our door because of social distancing. So really interesting that they haven't just said, hey, let's stand back. They've actually looked and said, how can we help? What can we do? What can we do differently? Um, Iceland, um, not the uh, uh, first supermarket you would think of when you think of supermarkets in the UK but they're the people that came up with that great idea of letting the elderly customers into their shop first and of course as we know all the other supermarkets have followed. A simple but brilliant um, and effective solution um, from Iceland and I love this one, uh, Mini, I've never heard of them before, um, it's a Danish supermarket when the rest of the world was running out of sanitizer, um, what they did was actually looked at how they price models and, and we've all been to supermarkets and, and sort of seen get two, uh, three for two and other pricing models. Well, they actually use that pricing model to reverse engineer some pricing. And they said, if you want to buy one sanitizer, that will cost you 40 kroner, which is about three pounds. But if you put more than one sanitizer in your basket, we're going to charge you a thousand kroner for each extra sanitizer. Genius, because what did that do? That stopped everybody from Man, panic buying and bulk buying and buying what they didn't need and it meant that sanitizers were available to more people um, so really really clever um, but interesting stuff that people um, are doing I guess the key thing here is well what can we learn from that because none of those are professional services how does that apply to us how does that apply to our marketplace well actually there's lots of lessons we can learn there there's lots of things that we can think about and think about how we can do differently. So, you know, it's about what are the opportunities? This is a time when, when lots of opportunities have gone, but there are plenty of opportunities there. We just need to think differently. Think about how we can help those in need because we've all got services that are needed and look at presenting alternatives. And that might be about looking at how you uh, package and develop your products and services because Let's face it, we're going to be in this for a while yet. So we do need to look at how we can help and position and package that differently. And we need to think about how we can distribute, distribute what we've got to make it more accessible to everyone um, and to make sure that they can actually get the help, the advice, the support they need at this time. And think about pricing. Um, you know, we've, we've talked about pricing uh, in professional services for a long, long time. I think this might be the kick up the backside that finally gets uh, more firms looking at that and being a little bit more flexible. So I think there are some strong and powerful examples there in terms of why we need to continue to do marketing at this time, remembering that marketing is about all of this stuff and being more strategic. So what else do we need to do? Well, we need to be smart, we need to be adaptable. Budgets are tight, um, let's not shy away from it. Businesses have taken a massive hit in their income. Um, so we need to look at what can we do that is either free or costs very little. Um, and the good news is there's lots of stuff we can do. Um, yes, you still need to invest time and resource um, and, and that needs to come from somewhere and that clearly has a cost. Um, but actually, we don't necessarily need to be spending lots of money uh, on lots of different things. So, for example, I'm not so sure there'll be many uh, uh, firm or summer parties taking place this year. And that's something that a lot of firms have done traditionally for years. And whilst there's a very good place for them, um, it's also something that for many years, a lot of people have questioned whether the, they, that's good value. But there's lots of things we can do. Um, and, and really, as headlines that on this screen, it's really here are the key things you need to focus on. Um, number one priority has to be our existing clients. They already know, like, and trust us. At least I hope they like and trust us. Um, they bought from us before, so they were brought into us. We've done the hard work to work to get ourselves known to them, and now we need to benefit from that, and they need to benefit from being a client of ours. So let's make sure we're talking to them. Let's make sure they know how to contact us. Let's make sure they know how we can help. 
and let's make it easier for them and their family and their friends to get the help that they need and that might be by running webinars q a it might be by giving free consultations um, there's many many things we can do be visible online um, and lots of businesses doing this um, uh, there's no excuse not to quite frankly um, and uh, I don't know about anyone else, but if I look at Facebook, LinkedIn, websites, if I look at, I've joined many new community groups for my area where I live, um, and people are desperate to hear from people like us. Um, I see a lot of questions being posed around legal and property and uh, financial matters on these community boards, so actually getting involved in them. And think about how else you can help your community. Um, I'm working with a law firm uh, in my neck of the woods who has recently donated five iPads to a local hospice to help the patients keep in touch with their family and friends at a time when, at a horrible time for them in any event. So they're in the hospice because it's end of life care and suddenly their family and friends can't visit them anymore. Horrific. Um, so a simple thing like donating iPads to help connect those people, um, fabulous support for that hospice and not the reason why this law firm did this, but actually it's resulted in them getting an awful lot of um, local media coverage and a lot of plaudits on social media. Now that's not the underlying motive. We've got to be very clear about what we do and why we do it, but it doesn't hurt to position yourself as being there for your community and thinking of all the different ways you can help. Um, uh, email communications, uh, whilst none of us want to be bombarded with unnecessary communications, right now that's a great, easy, effective and low cost way of keeping in touch with people, clients, professional contacts and beyond. Um, and it's really important that we remember that this is a long game. Um, this is not about short term wins. Um, this is not about suddenly overnight earning lots of new income we're not necessarily in that marketplace in this current climate this is about sustaining your business so going back to the title of my talk which is um, surviving and thriving our first priority is let's survive so let's keep visible let's keep making ourselves available let's make sure people know how we can help um, so in the short term we can survive but let's build a platform so that we're here in the long term so that when we come through and let's face it, we will come through this. We're the firm, we're the business they turn to in those better times. And that gives us an opportunity to grow. So as marketers, uh, sort of I've implied it, I suppose, um, in what I've said already, remembering that marketing is about identifying, anticipating and satisfying customers' needs and wants. Now is the time for us to step up and be leaders. Now is the time for us to say, I am the voice of the client. You need to listen to me because I understand what they need, what they want and how we can help them. So let's sit down and think about it. And the first thing you need to do is grab your old business and marketing plan. And here it is and rip it up. Because if you haven't already done so, it's out of date, it's irrelevant, it's not appropriate for the times that we are now in. It might have a place at some point again in the future, but right now it's not the right plan for your business. So what you need to do is create a new strategy, an action plan that reflects the marketplace we are now in, that reflects the timescales and what's likely to be happening over the next six or so months. And in the first instance, build a plan for six months, because that's the minimum amount of time that we are going to be in this difficult period. Um, hopefully not going to be locked down for that long, who knows, I hope not, um, but we're not going to overnight suddenly recover from everything that's happened. And make sure that that strategy and plan is really focused on your clients, really, more than ever. Clients' needs and wants have to be a top priority. Anything you produce, make sure you're thinking carefully about your tone of voice. It needs to be empathetic. Um, we need to be very empathetic to our clients, but we also need to have authority about the things that we are experts on so that we are getting that balance right. Um, think about the skills you have in-house uh, and the marketing know-how, the skills, the capabilities. There are so many opportunities right now to upskill your people and, and TMTV has been fabulous because it's enabled us over five days to get access to some really important information, hints, tips, advice, 
um, so make sure that the people that are running your social media accounts that are in charge of your content creation that are driving your marketing uh, and your messaging to clients and beyond um, have the right capabilities and support to do their job um, don't be afraid to see what else is going on out there keep an eye on your competitors because um, they, they there's lots of great things happening out there that it's one of the good things to have come out of this horrible situation is that we have all become more community minded more innovative uh, and look, have been looking at different ways that we can all help each other so see what else is going on out there uh, and, and take some ideas from that take some inspiration from that in terms of what you can do um, I suspect most of you have already done the reduce your overheads bit, but as a sense check in your marketing space, just sense check if you've got any regular costs that don't necessarily need to continue. I talked about content, so I won't talk about that again. Um, I don't have all the answers, you don't have all the answers. Let's talk to each other uh, to get the ideas and to get the involvement of everybody. But it also empowers your people if you're involving them in helping identify the solutions and what you can do um, and if we're looking after our clients and contacts then clearly um, making sure we have a plan for each of those key contacts is really really important <clears throat> and develop your social media channels so those are the sort of top 10 if you like um, that's been a whiz through I've just got one little um, uh, uh, slightly fun thing to finish on um, before I'm happy to take questions via Nick uh, or indeed from from the audience if any have come through um, so bear with me I'm not sure the sound is brilliant on this but there is a little video for you have it um, a little bit of fun to end but hopefully an important message hopefully that has resonated with a number of you hopefully there's been some hints tips ideas uh, any questions Nick thanks uh, well first of all thank you Claire I think that the tone sentiment and, and, and delivery was, was very 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 thought-provoking and, and, and hopefully our guests have got quite a lot out of that um, for me um, if businesses could only do one thing at this moment in time, what should it be? Um, get in touch with your clients uh, because they're the, they're the, if you like the bread and butter, they're the, um, they've got you to where you are. They know you, they like you, they trust you. If you haven't already reach out to them, um, talk to them, let them know you're there. Um, they're, they're, they've got to be your priority. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> no questions coming from the floor um I'm, shy. i've got a i'm going to keep going on because i've got a couple i'd like to ask um how do you keep um, your brand name out there in in challenging times claire um and I, so this is the content piece the social media the importance of um making sure that um you're highly visible but with the right messaging so examples might be to share access to information articles to actually put out questions to say guys we know how hard this is affecting you but help us understand what the key things are that you need help with so i think it's engaging in conversation and i think the, the easiest way we can do it right now is through social media um, because that is such a widely accessible and widely utilized um, uh, channel i'd be really interested to see some stats at some point and i haven't seen them yet on how much people's social media engagement has gone up um, because it has if my stream's got anything to go by um, so I think I think it is you can be visible by keeping in touch by regularly 
commenting and talking about the issues that are out there but be humble and be sensitive about what you're talking about i've seen some awful examples of people just self-promoting and now's not the time for that i absolutely agree um tm is a business or or, or law firms that are on the call at the moment what marketing can we do that doesn't cost us anything apart from our time of course and and how will it be effective sorry i didn't catch the beginning of that nick so so from from tm or the law firms that are on the call at the moment and estate agents what marketing can we do at the moment that doesn't cost us anything apart from our time yeah, it, it's content for me is, is the biggest thing um, uh, and, and issues. So um, I was on, a, on Facebook last night scrolling through a few different things and there's a community chat in my area where I live and there were people asking questions in that chat saying, how the hell do I get access to information? I'm meant to be moving house was an example and I don't know where to turn or what to do or what's likely to happen next. And it would appear that their uh, conveyancer solicitor, whoever they're using, had not reached out to them, had not spoken to them about um, mm. what happens now. Um, now, in some cases, we don't know the answers because everything's changing so rapidly. Sometimes we have to say, we're not quite sure where this is going. However, this is what it means to you right now. And as soon as we have that next bit of information, we will, we will share that, we will make sure you're the first to know. So, so for me, it's um, really important that people are, sharing content that are shared look lawyers are advisors they're experts you know let's hear it. let's hear from you because you're the expert i need to hear from right now i just need you to, to to phrase it and tone it in an appropriate way for me as your end client and remember i'm really scared i'm stressed i'm frightened so um i don't want clever technical language i want some some emotional intelligence if you like in the communications i see i want you to kind of be in my shoes uh, uh, and kind of put yourself in my position uh, and answer those questions that I've got. Mm, thank you. Uh, I know on LinkedIn there was a there was a there was a comment about it being April Fool's Day. I think the, the, I, one of your responses and one of our guests has just uh, typed in here. How important is it to be seen to be human when and when is humour appropriate? Oh crikey! We you know now more than ever. You, People are being so honest and frank about their emotions right now. And this is something that we as a sector are perhaps not very good at um, being emotional, being, you know, letting our emotions come to the forefront. Actually, now more than ever, we need to show this is happening to me as well. It's not just you. I'm, uh, every single one of us has got a story to tell. We've got parents living afar. We've got people with underlying health conditions. We've lost jobs. We've been put on furlough. We don't know whether we're going to have any income next month. We don't know whether we can pay our bills. That is really, really, really scary stuff. And you know what? Just let everyone know that you're feeling the pain as well. Don't hide from it. This is not a time to be brave and go, I'm all right, Jack. We're not. None of us are all right. We're, we're just finding different ways to cope. So it's really important to be human. Humour has a massive place and it has a massive part to play. And I've thoroughly enjoyed lots of the posts I've seen online through LinkedIn, Facebook and other social channels. Silly little video e excerpts, people producing musical renditions. What's it? Do, re, me, if anyone's heard the, that rendition this morning. Um, you know, it's fabulous. It brings a smile to our face. And you know what? We all need to find reasons and ways to smile, but we just need to be sensitive. Um, and uh, certainly my view on April Fool's yesterday was I don't want to be made a fool. I don't want somebody to make me feel uncomfortable or awkward. So doing things that might make people feel uncomfortable or awkward is not what it's about. Finding ways to make people smile and laugh. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely, Claire. Thank you. There's been a lot of love in the chat room, by the way, for you, Claire. Um, comments of the best, the best one of the week. So that's uh, that's fantastic. And um, and thank you again for your time today. Uh, how can people contact you, Claire? Oh yeah, they can. And I've taken my slides down because I thought I'd. Well, you're on. To chat, you're on LinkedIn, but, um, aren't you? But I am on LinkedIn, so you can find me through that. I've got an unusual uh, name, so it's not hard to forget and it's not hard to find me. So on LinkedIn, or uh, you can email me at claire at findgetgrow.com. Please do get in touch. Please do connect on LinkedIn. Be lovely to be connected with you all. And thank you very much, everybody, <laughs> for your time. Stay safe. <laughs>